Do you ever feel like you're struggling trying to manage clients wanting special exceptions? Do you find yourself or your team uncertain how to balance taking care of the individual and providing great customer service with honoring the rules? In this video, I'm gonna teach you how we think about this at Mark Fisher Fitness. My name is Mark Fisher from businessforunicorns.com and my goodness, do I have a lot of experience with this particular challenge. I have to tell you, over the years of Mark Fisher Fitness's history, this has been one of the greatest challenges we've faced internally. And I gotta be upfront with you right outside the gate. I don't know that there is a magic bullet here, but I'm gonna share with you the framework that we've used to finally come to a place where overall we feel pretty good about taking care of people as human beings, but also making sure that we've not descended into madness and have a business that is run by chaos and clients doing what they wish. Step one, be clear on your SOPs in the first place. So this probably goes without saying, but in practice, if you are having issues with individuals that are breaking the rules, my assumption is you've got some rules in the first place. And if you don't, well, <laughs> There's your problem, that's where we gotta start. So the very first step is you have to have SOPs, you have to have standards for how you run your procedures, your policies. Side note, policies, procedures, those are not my most favorite words. If you haven't yet, go ahead and check out my video on three things not to say to your clients. Link in the description box below. So we're gonna assume you've done the first step. You have clear standards and procedures for how you handle just the comings and going of your business, right? There's a clear late cancellation policy, you have clear policies around when people can freeze or when they can't, when they can push back billing dates, how termination works. So we're assuming all of that is in place and then you and your team are all singing from the same songbook. But then life happens, clients being humans, come up with millions of reasons why they should be allowed to break the rules. So step two is you wanna create SOPs for how to handle breaking the SOPs. You wanna have some coherent system for how you handle when individuals are asking for exceptions. And if I were to give you one, the easiest one would be everyone gets one get out of jail free card for one bucket of customer service standards that you're willing to do to be gracious. To make sure this doesn't get abused if you do wanna use that particular SOP. Step three, you wanna track every time you make an exception in the CRM. So on some system where you are tracking profiles for your clients, you wanna track any time you violate one of your standards and you do them solid and you break one of the rules, you make an exception, because what you'll find is, as a general rule, most clients are actually reasonable people and they're not going to ask for exceptions. And when they do, they're, in most cases, not gonna ask for them repeatedly. However, by tracking it, this means that anytime you're in a situation where you are considering making an exception, you can see in real time how often this has been done for this client. Step four, be willing to say no if an individual repeatedly asks for exceptions. Now, listen, there are some people in this world, well, they're just chaos monkeys and their life is a mess. <laughs> and we love them a lot, and it doesn't mean they're a bad person. Sometimes this kind of person can be, frankly, a hell of a lot of fun. But that doesn't mean that it's gonna work well for them to play within the rules of your training gym. That's why it's so important to track, because if it's the second and certainly the third time they're asking for an exception around a policy you've already clearly articulated, now we have an issue. I think there's somebody said for sure, give someone a go jail free card, sure. Give them the benefit of the doubt, maybe you didn't do a good job explaining as you could have. And at the end of the day, have empathy because most people, they don't really care about your policies. They've got jobs, they've got kids, they're not reading all the fine print. However, if you've already given some of the benefit of the doubts and you can see because you're tracking this diligently as is your team, in their CRM, in your profile notes, that you're consistently doing things to help them break the rules, you have to be willing to say no. The reason is, if you don't put your foot down some places, you will create an ugly culture where you'll have certain individuals that are running roughshod all over your policies and doing whatever they want. And then you have your cool clients that are honoring the rule of law that are always gonna get the worst end of the stick just because they're not making a stink and they're not asking for exceptions because they are good readers, they're good listeners, they know what the rules are, and they wouldn't unreasonably ask your business to do something that's not fair, particularly if they know that the business can't do it for all the people all the time. And step five is, yes, you wanna be a human in all of this. I do think you need to create some gray area. So for instance, let's say hypothetically of a situation where you have someone that's maybe a little borderline, maybe this particular infraction, they've done once before, but not twice. Maybe there have been three times in the past six months you've made exceptions of some kind. So they're becoming a little bit of a, a problem student or what we call 
called nowadays a helping hands ninja. And if that's the case, it's likely you are gonna wanna put your foot down. However, we wanna be human because I think the thing that it's hard to create an algorithm for is when something happens that's very extenuating, God forbid uh, there's a death in the family or something like that, something really traumatic, it's not gonna behoove you or them or probably the culture you want or great customer service to really put the foot down in those situations. So I think for step five, we do need to create a little bit of room for more discretion, even if they're quote unquote, at the end of the rope for the exceptions you can make. You just wanna do this in a very judicious fashion and then yeah, circle back to one of our previous steps, that too wants to be tracked. Now, a final comment here is, one thing we talk about Mark Fisher Fitness is we always want to assume honesty. We do not want to assume that people are trying to pull in over on us. Now, the reality is, listen, if you have hundreds of clients, or in some cases, if you're a big gym like MFF and you've been around for years, thousands of clients, you're going to have bad actors. There are individuals out there that are going to look to take advantage of you. But I think as a customer service heuristic, it's always better to be naive than be paranoid. So I think when in doubt, I personally do like to err on the side of the human. And the good news is, because we're tracking all of this, it takes a lot of the angst and the thinking and the time and the mental energy out of this. Because in my experience, that's the thing that makes it very difficult for you as the owner and for your team, is constantly having to educate what should happen. It's like you with Solomon, the baby, and you're like, do I cut the baby in the half? Do I cut the baby in half? No, don't cut the baby in half. All right, friends, so I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you like what's going on here on my YouTube channel, it would be mean a lot to me and help fill up a hole inside if you go down and smash that subscribe button. I'll catch you soon for another video where I'll offer you more actionable tips, psychological frameworks, and philosophy.